This is the fourth video in a series about Leonardo da Vinci's painting The Virgin of the Rocks, of which there exist two versions, one of them in the National Gallery in London and the other one in the Louvre, Paris. In the previous videos, I have discussed why it is my opinion that the painting in the National Gallery is the earlier of the two, and I also propose a possible patron for the painting in the Louvre. In this video, I want to look at a discussion of the geology in the painting, because the rocks in both these paintings are highly significant. In 1996, the MIT Press published a discussion of Leonardo's geology, the Authenticity of the Virgin of the Rocks, written by the geologist Anne Pizzarusso. Pizzarusso looks at the painting in the National Gallery in particular and finds a great many problems with the way that Leonardo has depicted the stone formations in this painting. Pizzarusso's study is detailed, but I find it full of misunderstandings and consequent misinterpretations both of the material that Leonardo actually painted and of the likelihood of finding similar geological formation in Italy. The rocks of the grotto are, in fact, a magnificent representation of the red limestone that is found in the Apennines, near where Leonardo grew up, and other parts of northern Italy. The crumbling of the water-worn stone in the foreground of the painting and the vertical splitting and cross-fracturing of the rocks behind the figures are typical characteristics and are brilliantly depicted. Pizzarruzzo is simply unfamiliar with the manner in which this rock fractures and has interpreted the different levels of cracking as indicative of different types of rock. What Pizzarruzzo misinterprets as round boulders of sandstone near the top of the picture are rocks of the same variety of those in the rest of the picture, with their outlines obscured by layers of dense moss, a fact which has become very clear in the London painting since its recent cleaning. It can now be seen that these round boulders are in fact green and fluffy. The same author, assessing the distant dreamlike landscape, also tells us that Fjords do not exist in Italy, and it is highly unlikely the glacial lakes of the Lombard region would have such steep relief around them. And she's talking about likelihood here. Peruzzo has plainly not seen the glacial lakes about which she is writing. In fact, a number of the lakes of northern Italy have precipitous cliffs and rugged formations all around them. This was written in 1996, and it's quite probable that Peruzzo has travelled to those areas since and seen the lakes of northern Italy in the way that I have seen them and seen just how precipitously steep those rocks, in fact, are. I went looking to see if I could possibly ascertain where the background lake of Leonardo's London Virgin of the Rocks was, and I think I successfully identified it. We can presume that Leonardo, fascinated as he was by geology, had not only seen the Apennines and the Italian Alps of the Lombard region, but had probably visited the Dolomites further east. The influences on Leonardo would have included the landscape near Milan, but also a landscape much closer to his familiar Florence. Leonardo had visited and been fascinated by the region of the Upper Arno between Florence and Arezzo. This area is dominated by tall, rocky crags, some a hundred metres high. Leonardo, finding fossils in the rocks, determined that the area had previously been underwater. Leonardo left many drawings of rocks and landscapes showing geological formations, including a landscape showing a flood breaking into a valley, now in the Royal Collection at Windsor. The critic analysing Leonardo's geology needs to bear in mind that the artist was painting in the studio 
remote from the scene and relying on sketches, studies and his memory to recall the precise forms. There is also the matter of artistic licence. Leonardo was not a landscape painter. He was not, like John Constable in the early 19th century, seeking to set down the precise features of a particular geographic location so that any viewer who knew the place could locate not only the scene but the spot from which the preparatory sketches were made. Leonardo's landscape in this painting is essentially symbolic. It is a wilderness. To create this wilderness, Leonardo has drawn upon the most majestic visions that he can extract from his days spent in the mountains. It is reasonable to presume that the landscape in this painting, in company with his allegorical scenes and scientific studies of swirling waters, are based on cumulative experience and observations, like Turner's Fighting Temeraire, rather than a single fixed point of view, like Constable's Haywain.